Hey, Twitch and Christian back. Today, I'm going to talk about is the Iraq dinar, the $500 note, a sign that the fallen angels of Genesis 6, or what some call the Anunnaki, have they returned? And I'm going to go over scripture and link Genesis 6 in the book of Enoch to the $500 note. And is this a sign? Because you would think with Iraq being basically a Muslim nation that they would have these deities on their money. So it's just pretty interesting. So God kind of like uh, showed me some things and I'm going to turn around and show it to you. All right. So these are, this is the $500 Iraq dinar note. And right here you have um, two specific deities. All right. You got the winged bull with that human head. And you got this guy with this pine cone looking thing with the, uh, with the wings. So I just begin to study it and really take a look at that. And I'm going to go ahead and just show you, is this a sign that they've returned? Uh, for those of you who study Bible history, maybe maybe you guys don't even know, because I know when I was in church, they didn't teach us anything about the other religions that were actually in the same region or same area as the Hebrews and going all the way back. They don't ever discuss it. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Is this a sign that the fallen angels, the, the slash Anunnaki, have they returned? Have they been released? All right, so I'm going to connect Genesis 6 with the fallen angels of Genesis 6. The book of Enoch, and uh, you guys will, can study it from there. Okay, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 6. When humans began to increase in number on the earth, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them that they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal, for the days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went into the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were heroes of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth, and every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth had been corrupted in, those, in their ways. Okay, so that's interesting how, you know, in the Genesis account, which, you know, none of this is in the, uh, you know, Sumerian writing. Any, any, any of the ancient aliens, the Sumerian, the Akkadian, you know, you're not going to find this stuff in any of their writings. So it's not similar at all uh, whatsoever. But it, I noticed that, it, I mean, it's interesting that it says, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. Okay, so not only does he decide to wipe out the humans, he also wants to wipe out all the animals that have been corrupted. So what does that actually mean? Okay, how did the animals get corrupt? Now, as you guys already know, before I get into anything else, that in the Bible there are different description of angels. All right, so we go to the four living creatures. Well, you know, you got some weird, you know, these are some people who have tried to just try to uh, make some artwork out of it. So here we go again. Here's a biblical description of cherub. So people have tried to give their description, you know, three heads and all kind of crazy stuff. All right, and then the biblical description of seraphims. So you can see that there's there's some weird things, and I could keep going and going and going. But if you guys, if any of you read like the book of Revelation, you read Ezekiel, you'll find that there are living there are all types of different angels. It wasn't just angels that, who look like humans. So we've got that out the way. So here again in Genesis six, he's wiping he's wiping out he's wiping everything out because of the Nephilim and everything that they're doing. So I'm just going to read shortly from the book of Enoch. And I'm going to skip as I, as, I, as I read so I can get through this uh, video as fast as I can. All right, this is going to sound familiar. Remember, this is the book of Enoch. It was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's been found with Torahs, Jesus, and, you know, every, there was a lot of references in the Bible to the book of Enoch. It was well known what took place. The book of Enoch, between chapters 6, and if you read all the way through chapter 22, you'll get a full understanding of, of Genesis 6 of what actually took place and the judgments that took place. And then, you wait, and guess what? You're going to understand the Bible in some places even more because without the book of Enoch, you, you can't get the revelation 
uh, with some things in the Bible. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered to him and said, Let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual implications not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. And then they all swore together and bound, them, and bound themselves, and they were all 200 who descended in the days of Jared. So keep that in mind, in the days of Jared. They didn't come down in the days of Noah. They came down in the days of Jared before Noah was born. So you had this whole time period, of probably almost a thousand years, you know, where the angels were just doing, I'm not sure the exact timeline, maybe from six to eight, six to a thousand years estimate that maybe that they were that all these things were going on or when it started so it names the it names here these in in the in the, the bible itself jude talks about it so we're going to keep going because you want to find out how the how the angels these genesis 6 angels what happened to them okay and their judgment and have they been released and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go on to, into them and defile them with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, and they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 3, L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against the birds and the beasts and the reptiles and the fish and, a, and to devour one another's flesh. And drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusations against the lawless ones. Okay, so it says that in Genesis 6 is where I showed you where he was wiping out the animals too. Because God doesn't need to wipe out all, all the animals to get rid of humankind. He didn't, need, he didn't need to wipe, he didn't need to do that. There was a reason because a lot of the animals had been corrupt. And they began to sin against the birds and the beasts and the fish. What is the actual sin against them? Because we kill and eat animals, right? I'm sure they were killing and eating because they had to eat too. So how could they sin against an animal? Well, obviously they were having sex. And I'm going to go into that. Because you guys have to remember there are different types of angels. They're not just angels that look like humans with wings. So there are, there are various types of animal angels. And the Genesis 6 group, the Genesis 6 angels... That was a different faction from Lucifer. So you guys need to get that. You guys need to get that clear. All right. That's why when you read the book of Revelation, you have basically the East versus the West. Because when the, when the fallen angels um, are released, they go against. I mean, the, the Antichrist army. All right. So you have your you have different factions that are involved in this. All right. A lot of people think, oh, the Antichrist is going to rule the world. No. If you read the book of Daniel. Uh, chapter 11 and some other things and you read the book of Revelation you'll find out that the Antichrist has enemies so he doesn't rule the whole world he may try to rule the whole world he'll cause well, some of them will follow just because they think he's a god anyway but you're going to have the East because they already know the fallen angels who have released already know who the Antichrist is but you gotta remember Genesis 6 angels had their own agenda so and just to show you guys really quick what happened to these angels? The rest of the book of Enoch uh, just goes into the very detailed, very detailed of what actually took place. Specifically, without getting into all the details, the angels went to God and said, look what, these, look what the watchers have done to earth. And so God says, go tell Noah. Okay? And he says, and this is what he says concerning those Genesis 6 angels. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seven generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. So 70 generations. right? So the angels of Genesis 6 that you guys, have, I just showed you, they were captured and put into a prison for 70 generations. So there's a debate on whether or not how many generations it is. All right, and... That when the fallen angels at the at the at the seventy at the end of their of their judgment of their jail time of their sentence 
they are going to be released. So if you type in, have the fallen angels returned? Are the Anunnaki going to return? You know, there's a lot of information on Google, a lot of misinformation, uh, especially of the Sumerian and the Akkadian and the Babylonian text concerning the Anunnaki. All right, this is just one article, and then and the angels do not look like these guys. I'll explain to you maybe one day what these really are. A lot of people call them demons, but they are physical and they are uh, fleshly. So, anyways, okay. So Jude does refer to not only does he quote the book of Enoch in the, the beginning of Enoch, uh, but he talks about the angels who did not stay in their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the day of the great judgment. For God did not even spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell, into the gloomy pits of darkness, where they are being held until the day of judgment. So we already know that Jude quoted Enoch directly. So we know that we know that uh, something there that's going on with the return of the watchers. Okay, it's prophetic. It's going to happen during if 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 they're already here. Okay, and that's what is the five hundred dollar note of the Iraq dinar. Is that a sign that they've returned? All right, and I do want to get a little, a little bit into, because some of you guys may not think that, well, how did they sin against the, the animals? And I told you that they had sex. Well, that would be crazy, right? But you got to remember, there are many different kinds of angels. All right, this is a protective deity, Sumerian, uh, Akkadian, which is a human head, body of a bull, or a lion, and bird wings. And in some writings, it is portrayed to represent a female deity. And I'm not even going to get into female angels because you guys are missing the whole point uh, because there is references in the Bible, but obviously I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to get into that right now. So you have this uh, weird-looking creature that they describe. You already know in the Bible you have cherubs, you have seraphims, you have the, living, the four living creatures. And I shouldn't have to show anybody in the Bible, but some of you will, some of you will have an issue if I don't. I'll have to keep trying to prove myself. Right, so here's a biblical description uh, from Google, biblical, biblical description of the four living creatures. So you have, you know, people, animals with wings, different animals that we don't see here on earth, but there you have animals in heaven that have wings. And obviously they're intelligent beings. They're just not you know, a lion walking around with wings, and he's a spiritual creature. These are living creatures. If you guys remember uh, Chronicles of Narnia, okay, remember the lion, and he was talking? Well, I can assure you that uh, in heaven, these angels that look like animals are not animal-like as far as, you know, they just act like animals, right? And they're not intelligent or anything like that. All right, here, biblical description of seraphims. Okay, so just uh, creatures with a bunch of wings, you know, looking weird. You know, there's just many examples in the Bible. I can just keep going and going and going and just to show you, but I had to show you guys something. So here we go, another, another creature that has four faces, you know, that's uh, described in the Bible. It's not hard to understand that when not only did the fallen angels of Genesis 6, they fell, some of them were animal like creatures so of course if you have a if you have a deed if you have if a fallen angel is like a lion well he's gonna he, he's gonna that lion is gonna more than likely have sex with that type particular type of creature and I know it sounds crazy but I just showed you guys you guys can't you know nobody can you, you can't refute that there are animal angels in heaven when some of them fell they had they had sex with animals, and that's where the hybrids, where the Minotaur and the Cenotaur and all those types of creatures, the Medusa, and, and all the stories from the ancient times as far as, you know, where these mythical creatures come from. Just to give you an idea how serious that uh, people, that they do take this, because there's two sides. You have the Christian group that know about the return of the fall of the angels, if you really study Genesis 6 and Book of Enoch. And then you have the return of the Anunnaki, the ancient gods of Mesopotamia. Well, so you have these people who are basically, they think that these were ancient aliens and they came down and they taught us all these things. 
uh, how to start kickstart our so, so uh, how to kickstart the human race. Okay, in that they manipulated you know monkey DNA to create uh, human beings and and all this stuff, which there's absolutely no evidence of the Anunnaki that were here 450,000 years ago. You can't find one piece of technology, not one piece of technology that that's 450 450,000 years old. You look at the return of the Anunnaki and what they say. It, it goes right together, all right? And if you don't know who the Anunnaki are, they are the gods of during the time, in the time of Jared, Noah, and even after the flood because the religion continued with the same deities before the flood and after the flood, all right? So these same deities, the Sumerians, then the Akkadians, and then the Babylonians, and then you had some other splinter groups, but those are the three main ones that the ancient alien people subscribe to. Uh, if you guys don't know, the, the whole entire story of the Anunnaki is actually comprised of all three, all three major groups, Sumerian, Akkadian, and Babylonian, and they all contradict each other about creation, about the gods, and everything else. It's, and people talk about the Bible being contradictory. Well, the Anunnaki text or the Sumerian and the Sumerian and Akkadian, it's mind boggling how those texts disagree with one another. Okay? The Anunnaki are believed to be the creators of man. These mighty gods left earth in the distant past saying one day they shall return. Curiously, if you look at ancient cultures around the globe, most of the gods, creator gods, left earth and promised to return one day. So there's two there's two different groups. Christians believe that the fallen angels are Anunnaki. Some people who are Anunnaki just believe that these are gods and uh, that they created us. So those two together, okay, I just showed you that basically the Anunnaki are the fallen angels. If you read the book of Enoch, the Anunnaki claim to have taught mankind. And then, and then of course, when you look at the book of Enoch, that those same fallen angels, right? And if you keep reading the book of Enoch, it says that those angels continuously changed form. All right, so they could change their form. Right, and they were being worshipped. So let's get to the sign. 2004, the Iraq Central Bank released this $500 note with these two DTs here. And you notice the first DT that I'm going to go over. I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but Lemassu is an Assyrian protective deity, often depicted of having a human head, the body of a bull or a lion, and bird and bird wings. And in some writings, it is portrayed to represent a female deity. So a lot of people say that. Sumerians and maybe some of these other groups actually saw these angels walk around. They were part of their society, part of their culture, and that's why they were able to, to describe these things and, and make them look the way they are because, you know, that's what they saw. So I showed you that in Genesis 6, the watchers fell. Now, these things would have been seen to the eye of those who were, who were around way back in the days of Jared and Noah and, and, and even after Noah. So, so since we know we know that there are different biblical types of angels, well, there are also angels that look like that but have fallen too because it says that, you know, uh, Lucifer took a third of heaven. But the Genesis 6 angels was a different group. Right? There are different factions, different factions of angels. Right? And I think I've already talked about that with the book Revelation with the Antichrist in the East versus the West. All right. And how the Antichrist really doesn't really doesn't rule the world, or he wouldn't have had, if you read Daniel 11, he wouldn't have had to go through and fight his enemies and then turn around and fight the kings of the East. These, this religion is a Near East religion. All right, so if you look at all the connections, and I'm going to show you guys here, this deity right here is featured on the $500 note. So is this a sign that they have returned? Because it says in 70 generations, now there's a debate on whether if generations is 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, or even 120 years, as some people claim. If that was the case, 70 years, if a generation is 50, 60, 70, 80, then they have been released already. I think they, some people have calculated around uh, uh, the year, you know, sometime in the 1900s when technology exploded, taken off or whatever. So this is just one deity that the Sumerians, they, they looked upon as a protective deity, angel, Onaki. And so we have this uh, deity number one here. So that's fallen angel number one. And then we're going to look at this particular here. You got the man with the wings, this little 
tone thing and a little purse right on the $500 note. Just to give you guys an idea once you pull it up. So remember the pine cone guy I showed you? All right, now if you look, you have your South American, same exact symbol, but with a bird. You got a fallen angel here that looked like a bird. All right, and it had a body of a man. All right, you just keep going. Now you remember they sacrificed humans to these gods. South America, a lot of these winged birds. So there are just many pictures of these things. All right, and just to get it out the way, the civilization that was there before the Sumerians, the Ubiads, they were the first people to settle in Mesopotamia. There is no evidence of any of these deities in the Ubiad culture. If you can find it, please show me because I have spent many, many hours studying that culture. But the Ubiad period, no mention of these, no mention of these deities at all whatsoever. Okay, this is what uh, the symbol on the, this here. Wing genies is a conventional term for a recurring motif in the iconography of the Assyrian culture. Wing genies are usually bearded male, male figures wearing birds' wings. Wing genies have all been interpreted as beings known as antediluvian sages or Apocalo and Akkadian. These beings were that existed during a godlike generation of humanity. These beings were closely associated with the god, with the god He during the Antiluvian age, humanity was covered, or more commonly referred to as the Great Flood, and inhabitants were purified and roamed of the earth as an invisible genie. These were the gods of the, the Sumerians. All right? They worshipped these beings. Surprisingly, that Iraq has put these deities on here. Now, there's twofold, because a lot of people say, well, the Iraq Dinar, when it revalues, it's, you know, it's a blessing from God. Okay? But you've got to remember... Anytime that God does anything, somebody also has their hands in the cookie jar. And we already know who we're talking about as far as that, biblically speaking. Is this a sign that the Anunnaki, the fallen angels of Genesis, have returned? I find it interesting that they would put this on the $500 note. Are they saying that they are back? No, they're not going to come down in, in, in spaceships and all this crazy stuff. Uh, that you hear about as far as the ancient aliens because you know what if if the Anunnaki really wanted to take over the earth they could have done it a long time ago they didn't need humankind to mine gold and it's all there out in space if they came if they traveled uh, light speed to earth to find gold well you know what the asteroid belt con contains more gold that they could ever find but I'm not going to get into all that right now so guys as I've just connected the $500 note it's representative of the Anunnaki. Is this sign, the fallen angels, the six, and the, slash the Anunnaki gods that were worshipped around that time period, are they returned? And are they in Iraq? And if they are, what is, if, what, if they are, and they're going to be part of this whole Dinar revaluation, you got to remember, they ruled as kings back then. Look at Enoch says they could change form, so they could look like any human. You know, is this, you know, people talk about this as God's plan. Well, we know that a lot of people are going to benefit from this. I mean, nations can literally build armies with the kind of money that's going to come, come from their, that's going to come from the revaluation of the dinar. God is doing something, especially now in the times that we live in, is to further along the prophetic, the prophecy. So if the dinar is set to revalue, Yes, God's people are going to be, be blessed. Yes, the world is going to look to Christians. Yes, that's all going to happen. And you can, and countries, some countries will literally will be able to rebuild massive armies. You'll be able to feed several hundred million people with the kind of money that's going to be coming through. You can easily feed an army like that with the, with the type of money and the revaluation. The kings of the East have to rise at some point. Right now, they're kind of weak. So when you look at God's prophetically, some things have to happen. Like the root, like the root, like when you, people talk about the rapture, right? Well, at some point it has to happen. And when it does happen, that's why I think, you know, when when the revaluation of the dinar happens, I, me personally, see that we are truly in those times because there is going to be that last push. Where the whole world, that they, none of these things are going to come to pass unless everybody has heard 
in, about Jesus. Then the end will come. All right? But God still has to mold and shape everything to make the prophetic happen. Even though God does rule, you got to remember who who the prince of this who the prince of the world is. But you also have to look at the other princes and the other kings that ruled at one time. Book and the, um, it talks about the ten kings that haven't been given kingdoms. You know Armageddon. Okay, so there's a lot a lot of things that you guys may not I can't explain everything in in one video. But have the angels have they returned? And is it just more than God blessing his people with a revaluation? Is it about moving his prophetic word forward and making way for the false shepherd to come up? Because in the book of Daniel, it does say that he'll raise up the false shepherd. So in order for all this to take place, the book of Revelation, well, obviously massive amounts of money is going to have to be spent on military. Because that's what it comes down to, the Antichrist and the kings of the east. Literally, if they have returned, speculation, that they actually could be sitting as kings anywhere in that whole entire region if they've returned. Let's see where this leads us. And keep in mind, folks, do not be deceived by the ancient alien theory because the physical evidence of the ancient, ancient alien theory is non-existent. These guys came down, the fallen angels came down in the days of Jared. One was described as the Anunnaki. You got to remember there's a war. There's a war in heaven. Not just with Lucifer and his fallen, but there are other angels and angels that have continued to fall. You guys know that there is more than one fall. Fall Lucifer. You have the Psalms 82 fall. You have the Genesis 6 fall. Angels have continued to fall. Some of them for their own reasons. For their own fleshly reasons. And if the fallen angels of Genesis 6 have returned, will we, will we actually see the return of the Nephilim? A lot of people call aliens Nephilim. You know, the whole UFO conspiracy. Anunnaki in their, in their rocket ships flying from Mars. Yeah, will we see the return? If they have returned... And we might start seeing some really weird things. Because, you know, they're already creating stuff in labs now. But when you have the purest form, a fallen angel that can mate with a human or an animal, I can see that the end times could be very interesting if the fallen angels of Genesis 6 have been released. So you guys tell me what you think. Do you guys think that this is a sign that the fallen angels have returned? You know, is there a reason why a, a, a Muslim country would put these deities that they would consider false deities on their money? So, I guess, so guys, I hope you guys have learned something, whether you're a Christian or not, uh, that you did learn some things from this. Uh, so guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you guys have any other questions, uh, maybe I could do a follow-up video. Um, but I really appreciate you guys like, share, and subscribe.